Year four was an amazing year here at The Vine. In case you missed anything, here's a rundown. We prayed for God to heal a broken ankle, and He did. We prayed for Him to heal a woman's back, and He did. We prayed healing for a woman in the hospital. Short time later, she was healed and headed home. We prayed He would heal a broken toe, and He did. Prayed He would heal a broken wrist, and He did. Prayed for Frank Decker to be healed of kidney stones as he filled in for David who was sick with the flu, and he was. Those stories alone are reason to celebrate, but that's just the beginning. We started the year off with a series called Momentum. We gave everyone their first dollar saved to frame at home and break glass only in case of an emergency. We gave two families $1,000 each to start their own emergency fund. After that, we moved to Why the Vine. David and some of the staff preached from the stage, the office, and the lobby. That was our camera guy's favorite Sunday. Next we moved to the My Fave series where David preached on his favorite passages and your passages that you voted on as your favorite. Then moved on to 101, I Believe In. We spent six weeks looking at the basic essential beliefs of the early church and how they relate to today. And for the first time in the history of the church, we had stained glass and corporate reading on the same Sunday. Well, on any Sunday for that matter. Kicking it old school. Next we had relationship status, it's complicated. We learned that God loves singles and so does the vine. Finding the one doesn't happen until Jesus is the one and a spouse becomes the other one. We also learned that Facebook is awkward for everyone, especially those who have no idea what Facebook is. Next up was bad religion. Going through James verse by verse, we discovered that most of what we've experienced or have been taught in the church is just bad religion. We also had a logo to test whether or not you're a Christian. Some of you still can't see Jesus in that graphic. December brought us into His name shall be called. We took a look at the nicknames of the Messiah as prophesied by Isaiah over 700 years before Jesus' birth. Too bad we got the names out of order because of Amy Grant's old song. That's what we get for listening to Aiden Grant. Bringing in the new year, we started a new series titled Inception. This might go down as the Vine's most popular series ever with record high monthly attendance and a crazy amount of emails. Nehemiah helped us discover that God has a dream for each of our lives. Most importantly, Kent Crane's hair didn't catch on fire. After that was the art of seduction. This series centered around how God's enemy used money, sex, success, and power to distract us from an authentic relationship with Christ. It did not, however, include tips on how to actually seduce someone. Sorry guys. And then we started I Never Knew That, where we took a look at Jesus' culture and how that might change some of the things we've read in the Bible a million times. Like how disciples followed their rabbis into the bathroom. Admit it, you never knew that. Finally, we just wrapped up one step ahead. We'll call this the sequel to our most popular series ever. Everyone has been asked how they can take one step forward in order for the church to be one step ahead. So to sum it up, let's break down the numbers. Summer of 2010, we had five cluster groups with 51 people. Right now, 13 groups with 146 people. We had record high attendance, four out of five Sundays in August, a record high Sunday in September, another one in October, and another one in December, not counting Christmas Eve, which was our highest attendance ever, with 627 people. And in January, we averaged our highest monthly attendance with 506 people. That was until February when we had 507 people. Must have been a baby born that month. And January included MLK weekend when everybody's supposed to go out of town and skip church. Not in B-Town, baby. We've baptized 25 people, dedicated 12, celebrated with 125 volunteers, and welcomed 468 first-time guests. Through the Christmas offering, we collected $8,800 to support Sarah Old's ministry and to provide scholarships for high deaf and kids who retreats. Approximately 70% of our regular attendees have gone through Financial Peace University. In the most recent class, 13 families were represented and $30,000 worth of debt was paid off. That ain't chump change, folks. 1,695 articles of clothing were collected during Coach for Christmas. Two teams took mission trips, one to Nicaragua, one to Mozambique. We hunted 10,000 Easter eggs and jumped on 160 feet of inflatables. We saw approximately 390 people at our fall festival, 130 families registered, 110 left addresses which were sent handwritten notes, and one pastor was repeatedly dunked in ice cold water. All were equally exciting. 
There were 43 students at Hydration, the High Def Youth Summer Retreat. 34 students at Contagious, the Winter Retreat. There have been seven healings and 18 salvations take place at High Def. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. We had 65 kids and 40 adults at Camp Kidzu. Seven kids and two adults at Kid Jam. The Kidzu worship crew has grown from four to 14 and we topped out at 167 kids for our highest Kidzu attendance ever. To all the Kidzu workers, bless you. We've given away over 100 Bibles, over 200 coffee mugs, and we've eaten 16,116 mints. And we've had almost that many newborn babies here. You guys have been busy. And last but not least, on October 15, 2010, we were given 11 and a half acres of land by the denomination in recognition for the great work that has happened here at the Vine and the realization of the good work that is ahead for us. Get excited, folks. Get very excited. God's about to bust loose on this place, so make sure that you get a front row seat.